Hi, it's Thursday, August 1st. After a few weeks of relative quiet to close out July, we now have a new tropical disturbance to track to kick off August. This is a tropical wave over the northern Caribbean islands, propagating towards the west-northwest, dubbed Invest 97L by the National Hurricane Center. This is bringing showers now to the Dominican Republic and now moving into the Turks and Caicos and southeastern Bahamas. And as stated, this will continue moving west-northwest, probably in the general direction of the Florida Straits, Florida, and the eastern Gulf of Mexico over the weekend and into early next week. And this is something that we will have to watch for potential tropical storm development in that region if it gets enough time over water in order to consolidate. At the moment, it's still a disorganized open wave. We have southeasterly winds on the eastern side of the wave axis here. You'll see easterly winds over the Turks and Caicos and southern Bahamas, and then northeasterly winds in the gap between Cuba and Haiti. So there is a wave axis somewhere in here draped across the Dominican Republic. And again, this is moving towards the west-northwest. Models have had a slightly difficult time predicting the evolution of this wave. It's not uncommon before a circulation forms, before a tropical storm forms, for models to have trouble, but there have been some pretty significant shifts in the last 24 hours. The original track forecast for this system was actually more up through the Bahamas and east of Florida, but things have changed because the northern side of the wave axis is not quite as expansive as it was before, and so the expectation now is for this to end up near Florida or the eastern Gulf of Mexico in a few days here. This is the water vapor satellite loop showing some of the upper level conditions. There is a little bit of troughing over Cuba and the Bahamas west of the system. You'll see light northeasterlies over Florida, westerlies over the Caribbean. So there's a little bit of an upper level trough here, but it is fairly weak and likely easily nudged out of the way or eroded by the heating that comes from the thunderstorm activity associated with the disturbance. So as this comes westward in general, wind shear is expected to be fairly light and we're likely to see this troughing replaced by ridging as the thunderstorms from 97L start to generate more clockwise outflow aloft spreading out from the center of the system. Now, if we look at the GFS, uh, this is a plot showing the low-level vorticity or spin at 850 millibars in coloring. So this shows where the wave is over the spine of Cuba by early Saturday morning. The light purple contours show the mid-level or 500 millibar wave axis. So you'll see this curved kink in the flow here. This is the 500 millibar wave axis, and you can see that on the GFS, they're fairly stacked on top of each other. This is a vertically coherent wave with the mid-level wave axis stacked and amplified on top of where the low-level vorticity is also maximized. So you can see where this comes from. Starting today, there's vorticity near the northern coastline of the Dominican Republic. It propagates along the spine of Cuba and uh, ends up here early Saturday morning. On the European model, however, this is fairly different. And on the Euro, by the same time on early Saturday morning, you do see some coloring here, some low-level rotation associated with the low-level wave axis. But the purple contours here, the mid-level vorticity is actually concentrated well to the south of Cuba over Grand Cayman and the Western Caribbean. It moves a little bit farther towards the west-southwest over the next couple of days while the low-level wave axis moves more towards the west-northwest. And that dislocation of the mid-level and surface wave axis leads to a more diffuse system that on the Euro becomes very elongated over the Gulf of Mexico, nothing super consolidated, and it never really develops at least over the first four days or so, and we just have a disturbance but not a full-blown storm in the eastern Gulf. On the GFS, however, we see a more coherent, stronger, and vertically stacked system that once it emerges over water is able to develop quickly and becomes a tropical cyclone west of Tampa on Sunday morning on this model run. Now you'll be able to see that in previous runs, the location and the strength of this system has varied widely on the GFS. 24 hours ago it was much weaker here. We've had it at very different locations relative to Florida on some of these runs. So you can see the pre-genesis uncertainty going on in the modeling here. One of the interesting things to watch short term will be which model is more correct about where the mid-level wave axis ends up moving that will likely depend on the persistence and location of these deep thunderstorms occurring within the northern part of the wave pocket as well as the interaction of the wave axis with the tall terrain of Hispaniola and eastern Cuba which throws a bit of an extra wrinkle in there. At the moment it does look like there is some vorticity production on this northern side of Hispaniola. It will be interesting to see if this amplifies as it approaches the northern coast or moves over 
the eastern part of Cuba over the next 24 hours. Which of these models ends up being more correct will end up being important for its development chances in the eastern Gulf of Mexico down the road, as well as its track, as if it concentrates vorticity more on this northern side versus more in the middle of the wave axis, that will change how far north the storm is positioned as it moves into the Gulf. Now, as it gets into the Florida, eastern Gulf of Mexico region, which most modeling agrees on, that's where we start having another source of disagreement, and that's in terms of the medium-term track for the system as we head beyond the weekend into next week. This is the mid-level steering plot from the ECMWF Ensemble, showing a short wave over Minnesota that is going to dive towards the southeast over Ohio over the next few days. Our wave axis is way down at the bottom of your screen here, and as we watch this short wave dive over Ohio, by the time we get to Friday night and Saturday, you can see where our wave is. This is 97L over uh, the central part of Cuba, and what's happening here is we have a ridge over the western U.S., so big area of high pressure here, and another ridge over the western Atlantic area of high pressure here. This trough digging into Ohio is, is causing a break between these two ridges, so a lane of flow is developing, which is what will turn this wave towards the north, likely in the eastern Gulf of Mexico or near the Florida Peninsula. So as this happens, you'll see it come up, and you can see this track, and there's the yellow on the ensemble mean showing where 97L is between the two ridges. Now the issue here is this is a very small short wave trough that gets easily stretched out between these two ridges and then leaves the scene stage right and moves northeastward. So you'll see this trough leave. You'll see all of this yellow getting evacuated to the northeast. And the problem now is that this western U.S. ridge starts to nose in towards the east again. And our storm or disturbance, whichever one it is, hasn't made it fully out of the Gulf of Mexico yet. So on most of these model runs, the steering flow actually collapses and we get a dramatic slowing of the storm track on a lot of these model runs around the time that it's trying to move inland to the southeastern U.S. There's no strong flow here to usher it quickly inland or across Florida and eastward. We have northeasterly flow on the back side of this ridge right here, and we have southwesterly flow out of the opposite direction due to the ridge that is still over the Bahamas. These two steering flows kind of fight each other, cancel each other out a little bit, so there's very weak steering here. And so what we get is a stall and potentially an erratic kind of track. We can see this on the ensemble plots of the different cyclone locations that are forecasted. In this case, on the European model, there's 51 ensemble members, each showing a slightly different possible version of the future. Each one of these red numbers shows the center of a potential storm on the European ensemble, you'll see there's a whole cloud of possibilities ranging from the southeastern Gulf of Mexico to near the Florida Peninsula on Sunday morning. You'll see the move generally northward, and on this point, the models agree. But by the time a potential storm moves into the eastern Gulf Coast or the Florida Peninsula, we see a slowing of the forward motion. Notice how as I continue forward, these red numbers are not making much progress towards the north and they're also spreading out, whether they kind of veer toward the west or veer toward the east, maybe even cross Florida and move up other parts of the southeastern U.S. coastline. There are all sorts of model runs that show different versions of this. The GFS shows the same thing. 31 members on this ensemble, you can see again, decent agreement on moving northward near the Florida Peninsula and the eastern Gulf, but then we see a spreading out and stalling and potentially remaining offshore or inland. This is a tough situation to forecast right now, and so the specifics of any potential storm impacts for particular locations in the southeastern U.S. is going to be hard to pin down for a little while, potentially until a storm actually forms and we get a little bit more clarity. In this kind of steering pattern, we could see tracks that stall, maybe go inland, then maybe come back out over water and then go inland again. We've seen that on some of these model runs. We've seen little loops so we've seen stalls, loops, and then going west. We've seen stalls, loops, and going northeastward. We've seen all sorts of things in the last day or two of model runs, and there's certainly no consensus yet after this gets into the Florida Straits, Florida Peninsula, Eastern Gulf region. We're pretty sure it's going to end up there, but following that, the evolution is very much cloudy. What we do know is that environmental conditions are likely favorable here. So if the system is 
slowing down over water that gives it extra time to develop that might increase the odds of a storm forming and strengthening if it ends up having extra time over water but it could also stall over land either way there's going to be a lot of rain here and the ensembles although the tracks differ a little bit in general expect water to be dropped over this region expect the eastern gulf coast you know potentially extending farther west to the central gulf coast as well and especially florida consensus on rain coming here even if we don't get a tropical storm forming this system is likely to disturb the weather over the weekend and into early next week and there's a serious chance that we have a tropical storm forming with additional hazards from wind and storm surge etc on top of it so this is definitely something to pay attention to over the coming days again no clarity here yet but the national hurricane center shows you the general area where this is moving 60 percent chance of development right now we'll see right this could be moving over land for a while it could be moving over cuba first then it could be moving over florida so that land interaction could forestall the development but if it gets time over water over the eastern gulf water is very warm here the warmest water in the atlantic is in the region where this system is going and conditions are favorable uh, so something to keep an eye on here but clarity on the exact impacts to the exact regions of this part of the country stay tuned uh, we don't yet know for sure uh, but we'll be talking about it for sure over the coming days i'll have another update for you tomorrow that's it for now thanks for watching